Hey guys, I'm here back in the math video. Um, sorry, it's a bit late. Um, sort of forgot. Um, you know, summer. So, hope you guys are having a good summer. Uh, today we're going to be doing some Mandelbrot. Uh, it's a math competition. So, I think this is Mandelbrot. It's from the National Sample Test, which you can find on their site. Uh, I forgot what number it is. It's the I think it's the last one. It's just the, let's just call it the last one because I forgot the number. Can't think of it at the moment. Um, so this is a sample test for the Mandelbrot Nationals. Uh, try to solve it if you can, and it uses a lot of things that you might not actually use in most math competitions. They're pretty obscure concepts. So try to see if you can solve it. And uh, without further ado, I'll get to the solution. So when you read this problem. You might think, okay, well, maybe x minus 2 is a factor of the quadratic. Maybe I can do something like that. You know, maybe I can do some guess and check and see what value. No, it's not what you do. And uh, you sort of have to approach this problem in an uh, interesting way. So uh, one important rule that I've learned in high school, uh, I've learned in middle school, I learned in middle school actually, uh, is that, is that, if you take the second difference for each value of a quadratic, it'll be constant. So let's say you have f of x and x. Let's make a table of values. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And you have a, b, c, d, e. And these are just, uh, this is just f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, etc. Well, if you take this difference, this will be b minus a, this will be c minus b, this will be d minus c, and this will be e minus d. And then you take the difference again, uh, this will be c minus b minus b plus a, which is c minus 2b plus a. Take the difference again, you'll get uh, d uh, minus 2c plus b and uh, e minus 2d plus c. The second difference is always constant. This stays constant for each for each set of three uh, three numbers. This stays always stays constant. And this is what we call finite uh, quadrat quadratic finite differences, which you may have seen in the title of this video might have given you a clue. Uh, it's it's not used in many math competitions. Uh, it, the, this is the first time I've seen it outside of a classroom setting, and I can solve this problem because at, by this time I'd already forgotten it. Uh, but this is why I like Mandelbrot and I like this problem. So we can use this to solve for uh, f of three. So let's say f of one is equal to you know, a, which is equal to uh, cosine three f to the third of forty. F of uh, oh sorry, f of zero equals a f of 1 equals b equals that thing, cosine 40, sine squared 40, and f of 2 equals 0, let's keep it at that, and f of 3 equals, let's just say x, because that's the thing we want to find, it's x. So, uh, so f of 1 minus f of 0 equals b minus a, and f of 2 minus f of 1 equals 0 minus b equals negative b and then f of 2 minus f of 1 minus f of 1 minus f of 0 this is the second difference that we have taken the second difference this is just negative b minus b plus a which is a minus 2b and this is the second difference that always stays constant and now that we found the second difference, we can use that second difference to find f of 3. So let's just go over there. So x minus 0 and 0 minus b are the first differences. And the second difference would be x minus negative b equals x plus b. This is the second difference. Remember, we just subtracted we just subtracted f of three, we just subtracted f of three from f of two, and then f of two from f of one to get these two numbers, and then we subtracted those to get this. That's the second difference, and the second difference is always consistent, which means x plus b is equal to a minus two b, which means x is equal to a minus three b. 
which means f of 3, if we substitute a and b in, is equal to cosine 4 cosine third theta uh, minus, whoops, cosine to third theta, four, or sorry, 40. What am I doing? Why do I keep saying theta? 40 uh, minus 3 cosine 40 sine squared 40. Okay, we have this. Now this is another obscure part of this problem. This is actually uh, the triple angle formula for cosine. So cosine 3 theta is equal to 4 cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta. That doesn't really look like that, but if we take out uh, 1 cosine to the third theta, we get cosine third theta plus 3 cosine theta cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta. And then we factor out cosine theta from this thing and we get cosine cubed theta uh, minus, uh, minus 3 times, uh, sorry, 3 cosine theta 1, oh, uh, cosine, sorry, cosine squared theta minus 1. And what's that? Well, what that is, it would be, uh, oh, sorry, this is a plus. This would be cosine cubed theta plus 3 cosine theta negative sine squared theta, which would be cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta sine squared theta. And guess what? That looks exactly like the expression we have, which means that that expression is equal to cosine 3 times 40, which is cosine 120, which is equal to negative 1 half. This is probably one of my favorite problems because it uses knowledge that you don't usually use. Like, who, who the heck remembers the third triple angle? Triple angle, uh triple angle formula, right? So, hope you found that enjoyable. That was Mandelbrot's National Sample Test, the last one with three points, and I'll see you next week. Say these are the possible roots. This term does not equal x1 times x2. Rather, it equals log x1 